Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in today's video we're going to start taking a look at Power Automate. So Power Automate is a great uh, tool to give it that name uh, available with uh, Microsoft in their Office 365 and it allows you to automate a range of tasks. What we're going to be covering off in the next following videos on from this one. In today's video we're going to look at the scenario of being able to take an ex, um, a SharePoint list, which you can see on my screen here, and get a daily extract of that. So what it will do is every day it will go extract this list into a CSV file and it will save it to a desired uh, document library also on SharePoint. The reason for doing this scenario for one of many is so in our scenario here we can see we've got a staff list and all this information is randomly generated so if it happens to coincide with any factual data it is completely by chance just to put it out there and because it's a staff list we might want to track this over time so we can see what our staff headcount looked like over multiple months or even over years and what the benefit of obviously extracting this uh, to a CSV file and storing it on our uh, document library is that's going to give us all those snapshots so we can look at that picture historically over time. And we may even build upon this same scenario to show you obviously the benefits and then how you could use that in something like maybe a Power BI report. But we can see we've got the list here, uh, what we're going to be using as our source. And we've then got a test archive set up here, which is simply a document library available on SharePoint. So if you haven't got SharePoint admin rights, then you'll need to get your administrator to set these up for you. But I've obviously got these here as our demonstrations. And not to go into much detail, but you can see our staff list has got some very basic made up information uh, and the idea in this uh, scenario is obviously this is going to be maintained daily with new joiners and maybe when joiners have an end date and hence is the snapshotting extracts we're going to be getting that allows us to obviously build this picture up over time. So in order to do this automation because we could simply do this manually ourselves, but you know why do something manually when we can start automating so we're going to be using the power automate. So if you're using Windows 11 you should be able to access the desktop version of this but like me who's using Windows 10 I think Pro actually uh, we're going to be using the uh, uh, the web version available to us in office.com in order to do that what we're going to do is go into our more apps option at the top here and you can see amongst other things we've got the option here of power automate so it's going to click that and that will open that up for us in another tab which I'll just move along here and you can see for uh, when you first open up Power Automate, it's going to give you some other suggestions. So there's many scenarios and ways you could use this, such as being able to extract and save attachments from emails uh, for just the first thing that pops into my mind. But as I say, we'll be looking at these other scenarios in future videos. So if you haven't, now's a great time to get you to subscribe to the channel so you're notified as those videos do come out. So for us, what we're going to do is we're going to just create a new uh, flow, as they call it, in Power Automate. So to do that, I'm going to go into my flows. And you'll see I've already got one available here, but we'll ignore that and we're going to go straight into new flow. Hit the drop down and you can see we've got a few options available to us. So you can have automations, so things that trigger this flow to run. But what we're going to do is schedule this based on a time. So I'm going to go into scheduled cloud flow. And the flow name, so here you just need to give, you that, give it a name uh, that obviously is going to be beneficial to what it's doing. And what we'll call it is daily um, download, for lack of better time terms, <laughs> we'll call it that. And so this is when I want to run the flow. So starting from, and today is 20th of August, we'll say 20th of August, and I want this to run every day at, uh, let's go for 10 p.m. Uh, so again, sticking with our scenario, uh, 10 p.m., generally that list isn't going to be maintained anymore because office hours are going to be closing at 5 p.m. So we're going to do this for the last point available in, in the day uh, to make sure that all changes have been captured. Um, repeat every one minute at the moment. We want that. We want this to repeat every day. So we'll just go into create. And you can see we've now got our first trigger point. So for us, it's uh, going to be this ever runs every day. So I'm just going to go into edit and just fine tune some of this. So we can see the interval is every one day. Let's go into advanced options. So I'm just going to make sure for clarity we've got the time zone correct. So I'm going to set this to UTC 
and where is it gone? Duh, 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 duh. I'm going to actually put it as Dublin, Edinburgh, London time, just because that's where I am. But you can obviously change that to whatever is applicable for you. Start time. So we want this to start running from later today and at these hours. So I want this to run at, let's just slightly change what I did earlier. So let's set this to run at 10.45. And then this is just hopefully counteracting any sort of times we might have with daylight savings when time jumps or back one hour. So we're going to stick with 10.45. It's just nicely at the end of the day, uh, but we'll leave it as that. So once we've done our trigger and we're happy with that, I'm just going to go into new step. And this is where we can now start building out what our flow is actually going to do. So the first thing we need to do is obviously get that extract or extract that information from our SharePoint list. So in order to do so, we're going to search in this search box here. And you can see there's a list of options all available, everything from Teams, uh, Excel. Like I said before, many times now in this video, there's so many different ways that you can source information. So I'm just going to search in here, get items, because I know exactly what I'm looking for. And you can see it's giving us a list of all the options we've got available in SharePoint. So again, you can have a look through these, but if not, don't worry, we'll start covering off more and more of these options in future videos. We're gonna go into Get Items, and it's obviously now gonna try and sign us into our SharePoint site, so let me just do that. Cool, so we can now see we're in, and you know it's in because one, no error message has popped up, but also it's now given us these parameters that we need to provide. So our first one we need to do is provide the site address which I'm gonna select from here, and we can see it's the only one available in this list because I only have one SharePoint site. And once that's accepted, what it will do is it will pre-populate this next selection. So it's now given me all the lists available on that SharePoint uh, site. So I want to go down to staff list because that contains our staff list, give it, believe it or not. And the next thing we want to then do is, yeah, I've gone into advanced options, but we don't need to worry about any of these. Again, all options that you could do here if it was required for your project. But no, we've told it we want to go and get all the items from staff list. So the next thing we need to do, having captured those items, is to create a CSV file. But in order, the first part is we just need to create a CSV table. So if we type in here, create CSV, you should, or well, hopefully, yep, yeah, you can see we've got create CSV table available to us down in the options here. So I'm going to select that. And in this box here, this could be a bit misleading, but if you click in the box and go over to this pop up, you can see we've got some dynamic content. And the very first one we've got here is list of items. So this is going to be all the values or the list of items that were acquired during this previous step of get items. So you can delve into that into more detail to the complexity if you wish, but in the short version, it's simply just go into get items. So I'm gonna select value from there. And then what we're gonna do in this scenario is we're gonna go into the advanced options and rather than have automatic uh, columns, so what we'll do in this scenario is it will automatically look at all the columns available to us in the SharePoint list and it will create all of those columns uh, for us in the CSV table. Well, I only want to do a select number, so I'm going to go into custom. And then here is where we can now map our uh, values to columns. So anywhere or oh, the left side here where it says header, this is going to be the uh, column header available in the CSV file. And the value is going to be the corresponding value we want to use from the values we extract from our SharePoint list. So for me, I'm going to put in here, I believe it's employee uh, ID was the first one. So we can then see, actually, if I scroll down, it will show me. So if you scroll down here, you'll see all the available options available to you. And there will be additional to the ones that you obviously know and want. You'll see there's all these other different things like modified creative fields that are available in SharePoint. But we're not interested in those. So for me, I've got the employee ID is going to be my first column header in Excel or the CSV table to be more specific. And the value I want to map to that is employee ID. The next one is going to be first name which quite obviously is going to be first name. We'll then also do surname. We've then also got an email. Uh, let's go email. We'll go start date, which is going to be start date. And we have end date, I believe it is. Yes, so we'll do end date. So that is all the fields I wish to utilize in the CSV table from our SharePoint list. But the one additional one I want to do is also get a snapshot date. So I'm going to call this, uh, so let's call it a snapshot. 
again, lack, lack of better terms. And then what I'm going to do here is use some dynamic content or use an expression rather than a field extracted. So what I'm gonna do is go into an expression here and I am going to uh, utilize an expression value called UTC now, which is simply just, you know, get the current UTC time. Uh, what this will do by default is, as you can see here, is returns the current timestamp as a string. So not only will it produce the date at which this is run, but it'll also do the time as the date timestamp. I'm just going to change this or the format of this. So all I need to go is format uh, date time, I believe it is. Open brackets. Yep, yeah, we can see that's worked. And I'm going to just change the formatting of this to only be date. I mean, yeah, the day, the month, and well, I've done, made a mistake already. Instead of double quotes, we need to do single quotes here. So we've got day, month, and year. And what you might have also noticed there is I've done the M's for month in capital. That's simply because capital M's will give us the month, whereas if you do lowercase M's, it will bring back the minutes at which this is run. So we'll just do OK. And if it didn't like it, what it will do, it will give an error message saying that something is wrong. Uh, but we can see so far it's all looking good. So we've now got all of our mappings that have been created in that CSV table. And then the last step we want to have on here is simply going to be create file. So let's go into create file and it will be another SharePoint one. Yep, so we've got it here, create file. Let's select that. And similarly to get items, it now wants us to provide the location in which we want to create this file. So for me, I'm going to go site address. So it's going to be the same SharePoint in terms of the folder path. So if I click this folder icon, it's now going to give me all of the folders that are available on that SharePoint site. Uh, for me, I have a, uh, a test lo uh, location called, and I can't remember what it is now. Uh, it will be test archive. Here we are. So if I go into the arrow, it allows you to navigate into that folder. We don't want to be in that level. So if I go back to SharePoint and scroll back to test archive, I'm just going to simply select that and then this is the folder within here uh, that we want to save our content to. Uh, so obviously this is a separate document library, but ultimately that is where we want it to be saved to. The file name for this, so we're gonna call it stafflist.csv. So ensure that you have got that .csv available on there. And then the last thing we're gonna do in this content here is you can see it's create, so when you look at this, having selected in this field here, you can see obviously we've got our dynamic data available to us. So everything, all the fields available in get items, which is obviously the get items up here, are listed in this section here. And then the top one, so the last step that we've done, you can see create CSV table has given us this output. So we just want to select this output because this is the content that's going to appear in this file that we're creating here. And that should be all of the steps we need to do. So all I'm going to do now is simply save this flow. And hopefully I'll do that. Yet yeah, we can see that it's, the flow is ready to go and we recommend you test it. So if we just close this window here, and, and sorry, before I close that, you can see it gave us some recommendations of something we could improve on, but nonetheless, we'll stick with what we've got. So all I'm going to do now is go into, well, before that, we'll go to our destination. So we can see currently our test archive library is empty. Hopefully, we're now going to put a file in there. So if we go back into our flow and we click on test, uh, so yeah, it's going to give us the only the option of manually. So just click manual and then click test at the bottom here and then run flow. And then hopefully, oh, now click done, just to get rid of that side panel you'll see that the flow is now working. So we can see it's got a green tick for the trigger, green tick for get items, a green tick for create CSV table. And also apparently we've got a green tick here for create file. So it's saying that a file has been created, hopefully in the right location. So we'll now go over to our test archive document library. At the moment it looks empty. So what we're gonna do is quickly refresh this page. And as if by magic, you can see we've now got that file available to us there. So Let's click into staff list and have a look. So once it opens up, uh, perfect. So we can see we've got all of our fields available to us. So all the fields that have come out of our list. So let's go back into that. So we can see yeah, this is our SharePoint list. And then how this is how it now looks in the CSV format. 
You could obviously delve into this a bit more and we could start tidying up these two columns here. So start date and end date. We can see it's in the date time format, but obviously that's something you could delve into. But also another important factor is you can see this dynamic column that we created for snapshot has populated today's date, the 20th of April, um, 20th of April, the 20th of August against each one of the rows in this table, which obviously as we start building this out and getting daily um, snapshots, and especially if we were to pull this into a reporting tool like Power BI, it gives us the ability to identify exactly the date uh, that we want to report on. Or if we're looking at these over multiple months, it gives us the ability to report by month. But nonetheless, we can see that everything has report um, is captured here as we intended. Let me just close this file and go back to the document here. So one thing we just need to change to give us the flexibility we're after is at the moment obviously we just called this file staffList.csv. now the problem we'll have with that is when it comes to this uh, flow work running maybe tomorrow obviously it's going to either try and overwrite this file and call it the same thing or it's going to call it something like staffList1.csv. so nonetheless it's not going to be very indicative of what the data is so what I want to do now is update our flow so that it includes a date stamp of when this data was captured. It just gives us a bit more clarity. So we'll go back into our Power Automate tab and we'll go into the Create File option here. Uh, actually, we won't do that we because it's now showing us, obviously, the test and it's showing us all the output. What we will do indeed is go in top right here, we'll go to Edit. And where it says File Name, we'll just uh, we'll delete that for now remove that out of there and instead go into add dynamic content oh it's already open for us there but we'll go back into that and this time we'll go into expression and we're just going to make a dynamic way of obviously calling it staff list but obviously including today's date so in order to do that the very first string option or function we have available is concat so we'll select that and this now allows us to connect concatenate a number of strings together and obviously build our dynamic file name so the first thing we want to do with single quotes because that's what we need to do for string is we'll call this staff list and also in there i'm going to include an underscore and hopefully this will then become clear as we move along the next thing I want to combine in my text string and to do the next part I need to uh, separate by a comma and this time I want to get today's date so let's go into format date time so you might remember this step from uh, previous when we we're trying to save the uh, snapshot date within the actual file so format date time open brackets and within this function we're going to utilize UTC now uh, I'll just type it there, but obviously you can scroll down through these options here to select what you require. And I want to format UTC now in this particular format. So I want to go uh, year followed by the month. Oh, too many M's. Uh, and then followed by the day. And then what that will do is it will give us the string which goes in year, month, day. And it's just, it's a very easy way just to obviously archive your files, but also I find it just gives an easy way when it comes to sorting the data or any other ways you need to manipulate that data going forwards. So at the moment what will happen, it will give us a file name of staff list underscore and the date at which this obviously is running. But an additional piece we need to do here is we just need to add the .csv to the end of our file, so the, the file type. So let's do one more comma for our third and final part of this concatenation. And in quotations, we'll just put .csv. Once we've done that, we'll click OK. Everything's been accepted, so we can see it's looking good there. And we'll click Save. And then wait for it to save. Yep, we can see it's all good. We'll lastly go back into our test We've got manually selected here, and let's go on to test. Yes, we're happy to run the flow, and then let's go done. And now we can see as it steps through the options here. So we see everything else is done. And I don't think I covered off a second go, but you can actually see the duration of time taken to perform this action. So zero seconds, one, sec one, one second to get the items from SharePoint, zero seconds pretty much to create the CSV table, and it's actually quite taken seven seconds to uh, create that file on SharePoint as well. So we're happy this has all now worked. Let's go to our test archive, and without even refreshing, we can see that we've now got a new file added, but this time it's captured 
the today's date when it's run. And then the benefit of this is as we move into tomorrow, we'll also have on here the 21st of August, 22nd of August, and so on and so forth. And then what that will do, as I may have mentioned earlier, is when it comes to reporting, maybe we're only interested in one of these files from each month, but it'll enable us to look at how that staff list has changed over time and obviously give you some useful information. So talking about useful, I hope you found that video useful and it gave you the answer to maybe what you were searching for or it's just enlightened you on new functionality that we have available to us and something that you could maybe embed into your work to really improve the data that you're currently capturing. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give the video a like. Uh, it's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it helps that all important YouTube algorithm. And if you're new to the channel or this is your first time watching one of our videos or maybe you watched our videos before, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button. That way you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out in the future. Lastly, thank you once again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.